welcome back to my channel. My name is Dawn Gale and I am the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. In case you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in a few different places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook, of course our fun Drunk Flamingo Glitter group, and my Damn Fancy Tribe, which is my exclusive group where I offer exclusive content, free digital files, discount codes, and group challenges each month. All of those groups are going to be linked in the description in case you guys want to check them out. Today's tutorial is another 3D mug. Um, this one is a little cow. I love cows. I live in Georgia and there's tons of farmland country around me and there are cows everywhere. Um, my brother even has one of his neighbors has two alpacas so it's super fun to kind of see all these animals around us. So I decided why not make a fun mug with a 3D cow on it. Um, so I know that the Highland cow is super popular right now but I try not to make my tutorials or cups like everybody else's. Um, if I see something that's kind of popular I kind of think well how can I change that to kind of suit my style. So I decided to do this little dairy cow, just a black and white dairy cow. Um, it did remind me of an old job that I used to work at. We actually um, a dairy cow farm was one of our customers and I got to go to that farm and actually milk the cows and feed them and see all the new babies that were born that day so it was super fun so when I was making this um, cup it was kind of reminiscent of that time which I really enjoyed so if you guys are ready to see how I created this fun 3d dairy cow mug let's get started Alright guys, so I already prepped my mug white and we're going to use Counter Culture's Culture Sculpt. I have some silicone brushes, some water, and of course gloves. Since Culture Sculpt is basically a sculpting epoxy, you do want to make sure that you have gloves on when you use it. And for those of you that have not used Culture Sculpt, it is like I mentioned, a sculpting epoxy. It is a two-part epoxy. So you mix equal parts of A and B, just like you would regular epoxy, but this is in clay form. I do like using Culture Sculpt for a lot of things. It is much lighter weight than polymer clay, and there's no baking involved. It will set um, depending on how thick your piece is, if I'm making them pretty thick, then I do let them sit overnight. But if it's just a thin little thing that you're making, sometimes it'll be dry in just a matter of a few hours. So you guys can see that one part is a little bit of like a creamy color and one part is stark white. Um, and I am mixing this over my trash can because Whenever I mix, a lot of little pieces fall off. <laughs> so I don't want it getting all over my desk. And so I'm just mixing it. I basically just fold it into each other. Whenever I do this, it always reminds me of that Schitt's Creek episode where they're folding in the cheese, or they can't decide what folding in the cheese actually means. So once you get it mixed, you are ready to apply it to your tumbler. So I am just going to make my little cow nose. And I did have to try a few times before I got it the size that I wanted. At first it was really a lot bigger than I wanted it. It was too large. I wasn't crazy about it. And I did want it a little bit off center because I didn't want the handle, which is going to be my tail, um, like right to the side. I wanted a, a little bit offset. So I did end up taking this piece off too because I realized that that handle was not where I wanted it to be and I did just take some water on a paper towel and just wipe off the culture sculpt that was already on there it's super easy to remove 
and then I just applied it again this time where I wanted it and once you get it where you want it you can just kind of smooth down those edges and I will kind of warn you guys that if you mix culture sculpt too much um, it can get a little sticky on your hands and for some reason my video cut out right here it did this twice when I was trying to film this tutorial I don't know why um, but basically I just dipped my finger into some water and smoothed out the snout and now we're going to make the little ears I just rolled out two equal balls and then I just made little triangles out of them. Um, I did make them kind of thick just because I'm, you know, I don't do a whole lot of like flimsy 3D stuff just because I always worry about customers breaking them off um, when they're not careful with them. I mean, I've even broken stuff before, so I know if I can do it, then customers can do it. And I try not to offer stuff like that so I try to make my items that I actually sell to people like as durable as they can be um so now that I have my ears on there I am just kind of forming them you know these are just cow ears so they don't have to be perfect you know I think that um the imperfections that are on our items is what makes them handmade so I don't always try to get them 100% perfect. Um, but you guys can see that I am dipping my fingers in a little bit of that water and just kind of smoothing out any little creases just to give it a smooth surface for when I go back and paint this. So now that we have our little ears on there, we're going to make the fluffy part of his tail and I'm just kind of forming this a little bit in my hands oh actually we're going to make his hair right now I forgot about that part but again I just formed this hair a little bit in my hands before I put it on the tumbler And then I'm going to grab my little silicone tool and I'm just going to kind of shape it a little bit more just to give it a little bit more definition that I want that I can't get with just my fingers. Sometimes working with gloves is a little bit harder than you think it would be. So you can't make little points or things like that. So once I get my shape how I want it, I am just going to go back again with a little bit of this water and just smooth out any little spots that need smoothing. And you don't want to add too much water because you can add too much and it can be a little liquidy. And the more water that you add, the longer it will take to dry. So I am just kind of sharpening his little, little hair points a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with another one of my little tools and we're just going to add some detailing to his hair these little tools I've used forever I want to I think that I got these in like the cake section at 
Michaels. I think they're really like fondant tools. I don't know. A lot of my clay and baking stuff are like are all kind of combined together. But it's just a, like a sharp little needle. You could do this with a toothpick or one of the silicone tools or just a needle. And then we're going to make his little nostrils with this other little tool. And I'm just dipping this in water and we're just kind of smoothing out his nostrils. And now we're going to make his tail. So I just kind of form it a little bit in my hands beforehand, and then we're going to smooth it down on the cup. And again, just using water to smooth it out. And we're going to get the same tool just to detail his tail a little bit. And I'm really using this little needle tool at the bottom a little bit more just to give it the effect of kind of like a little wiry tail. And once you're happy with how he looks, we're just going to set him to the side and let him dry. So once he is completely dry, we are ready to paint him. I'm going to use the pop of color shock paints. I'm pretty sure I have almost every color of the shock paint. I really like this paint because it dries super quickly. It has really good coverage. So I'm gonna show you guys how I paint them. I just have a variety of paint brushes And I'm going to start with just painting the ears white just because the culture sculpt dries to kind of a creamy white and not like a white white. So I am just going to paint the ears because there will be some of the culture sculpt that is not going to be painted black or pink. So I want to make sure that it matches the body of our little cow. And now that we have our ears painted, we're going to do the rest of him. And I do just have a water bottle and little plastic cups that I keep upstairs just in case I need to clean out my brushes. So we are going to paint his snout next and I'm going to use the colors blush and cotton candy. I 
I just like the idea of having two colors just to give it almost like a marbling feel. And I will go ahead and tell you guys that my video does cut out in just a minute. Um, but I did paint the interior of his ears pink with the cotton candy and blush. And then I painted his hair and his tail black. And what I'm doing first is just going around the edges just to make sure I get a clean line when it comes to the snout and the cup. But don't worry because if you guys do get a little bit of the pop of color on the cup like I did just a tiny little bit, it is very easy to go back and clean up with just water. So if you get it on the tumbler somewhere where you don't want it, you can just get a little paper towel and wipe it off super easily with just regular water. And another reason why I like Culture Sculpt too is because you can paint it with pretty much whatever you want to. Sometimes polymer clay can be kind of finicky with what you can paint it with. I have had um, some clays react to certain acrylic paints that I have for some reason. Um, and definitely spray paints, it, it will stay sticky and you can epoxy it if it's like that. So. If that happens, then you're basically out of luck. So I do have to test all of my paints on my clay just to make sure that it's not going to have a reaction or you can just use colored clay. So now that I have the outline done, I am just gonna go to town on his little snout just covering the whole thing and once I have the base covered I'm going to start adding a little bit more color with the cotton candy pink I'm just dipping a little bit in there and just kind of rubbing it on I don't want a whole lot of this pink pink color but I like the idea of just breaking up the the blush And right when I start painting these ears is when my video is going to cut out. So the next scene is going to be a lot more painted than <laughs> what it is now. And I did switch to a smaller brush when I was doing this as well. I just needed something that could give me little sharper corners. And wow, he's all done. <laughs> anyway, sorry that it cut out. I am going to go do a second coat on these items so y'all will still see how I kind of paint it. I think my iPad was too low on battery and I didn't realize that. So I'm gonna go and do um, his eyes right now. So before I actually paint them on, I am just going to draw a little dot with my pencil on where I want them just to make sure that I get them even before I put the paint on. And instead of paint brushes, I am going to use a dotting tool
that way they will be a they'll be pretty circular and even So that is part of his little eyes. And I'm going to give him some little eyelashes. And then when the black of his eyes dry, we're going to add the little white highlights with some white paint. But you wanna make sure that his eyes are dry first. And now we're gonna do the spot around his eye. And again, I am just going to draw this with a pencil first. just so I have a guide of where my paint is going to go. And then we're just going to paint his little spot. And of course my video cut out again y'all i promise i don't know what was going on but here is my cow basically finished um i am now going to go in and do a second coat of all of the black so right now i'm really just kind of touching up any little black spots that i see and um then I'm going to add his little mouth down here. I started trying to do it with this little pointed silicone tool because my brushes were a little bit fatter than I wanted, but I ended up just going over it with a paint pen, which worked better.
So now y'all can kind of see in the video where there are some kind of patchy spots from the pop of color paints. Um, it usually does take two coats to get really good coverage. And you do wanna make sure that the first coat is completely dry before you add the second coat. Sometimes if you try to apply your second coat when the first coat isn't completely dry, it will kind of pull up that first layer of paint and then you'll have to let it dry all over again and then add another coat. So it's best to just let it dry, just set it to the side, do something else for an hour and then come back and do your touch ups. So we're just going to go through this really quick. And y'all can see on the tail and the handle that you can see the white through the black. So that's why we're doing a second coat. All right, so I think we're pretty good on coverage. Oh yes, we have to do his little eye patch. So now that his eyes are good and dry, we're just going to go and add these two little dots for highlights. And I also went over his little mouth with a paint pen, which I forgot to film. But now he is ready for his first layer of epoxy. I just have um, a little bit of epoxy here. I'm not sure how much it is. I usually don't measure because I do lots of cups at a time. Um, I would probably say 20 30 mils and then I just put in a little bit of glitter just to add some sparkle to him I'm using ocean breeze vodka cocktail from the drunk flamingo and the mermaid tumbler next to him I will put a link now if you guys want to check out that tutorial so I am just going to start slathering him with epoxy um, I did not seal him. I did not put quick coat anything over him. I have found out the hard way that quick coat will make pop of color run. So if I tried to seal this with quick coat, the paint would start to come off. So I am just trying to cover every little nook and cranny on him with this first coat. I am just kind of trying to touch every little space that I can, his hair, the crevices around the tail, 
around his little snout just to make sure that everything gets covered. And then once I have everything covered, I'm going to go back and remove any areas of heavy epoxy. So around his ears, around his hair, where I think that epoxy may gather, I am going to try to scrape off or smooth out. And also, if you feel any spots that may seem a little more dry, you can definitely add some epoxy in those areas. And don't forget to get your bottoms. So now I'm just kind of wiping off any of that excess epoxy. So I'm getting as much off with my fingers as I can. And then I'm also going to grab my little silicone tool. And we're just going to kind of wipe around any of those spots that may be gathering epoxy. I'm just wiping it on a little paper, paper towel that I had. And I'm getting it out of his little nostrils. <laughs> Any place that could gather epoxy. Um, just because I don't want there to be a section of epoxy that's kind of filled with bubbles. You know, some spots are going to be unavoidable on a tumbler like this. Um, but you do want to try to get as much off as you can. And once you think you have enough off of there, so there's not going to be any little puddles, we're going to pop all of our little bubbles with our torch. I have the big torch from CCDIY. I promise it is not as scary as you think it is. The first time I used it, I for sure took it outside. Um, but after you use it a couple of times, it's not, it's not that bad. So after this layer of epoxy dries, we're going to clean the rim. So here's what our little guy looks like after the first layer of epoxy. But this is just like any other tumbler. We're, we have to make sure that the rim is nice and clean so that there is a good seal. So I am just going to take my sanding block. I use a 60-80 grit block. I get this at Walmart. 
and we're just going to sand at an angle until it reveals about one or two millimeters of stainless around the top. Typically, I would do this over my sink, but I had dishes in there today, so we're not going to film my dirty dishes. And since this is 3D, I do have to be a little bit careful because I don't want to sand any of the color off of his ears or hair. But you guys can see already that there's about a one or two millimeter stainless rim. So I will take this over to the sink, wash it. I will sand any little pieces that I think need to be sanded. And then I will put him on the turner for the final layer of epoxy. And here are some finished pictures of this cute little cow. I love him so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, as always, if you have questions, just ask below and I'll get back to you. And if you make one of these guys, please, please post him in my tutorial group. I love to see y'all's versions of things you come up with from watching my tutorials. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or our Damn Fancy Tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.